We'll start in verse 8. And Hilkiah the high priest said unto Shaphan the scribe, I have found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. And Hilkiah gave the book to Shaphan, and he read it. We'll go down to verse 10. And Shaphan the scribe showed the king, saying, Hilkiah the priest had delivered me a book. And Shaphan read it before the king. And it came to pass, when the king had heard the words of the book of the law, that he rent his clothes. Now let's jump over to chapter 23, and we're just going to read the first few verses. Um, and the king sent, and they gathered unto him all the elders of Judah and of Jerusalem. And the king went up into the house of the Lord, and all the men of Judah and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem with him, and the priests and the prophets and all the people, both small and great. And he read in their ears all the words of the book of the covenant, which was found in the house of the Lord. And the king stood by a pillar and made a covenant before the Lord to walk after the Lord and to keep his commandments and his testimonies and his statutes with all their heart and with all their soul to perform the words of this covenant that were written in this book. And all the people stood to the covenant. Brother Kelly, would you mind helping me out, brother? Pray for us. Amen. So that song we just got done singing, it's like one of those moments Pastor talks about when song service goes right in with the message. And it's that type of thing that you stand there and you know what you're about to preach and you're like, only the Lord could kind of put that together for us. Um, but the focus tonight is going to be taking a stand, right? So maybe you've been recently saved. I know most of you have been around for a little while, so maybe you've been around for a little while. Maybe you're just learning, or maybe you're in this position that you've been slowly giving ground back to the flesh. Um, daily frustrations can wear us on us all. Um, frustrated uh, ambition, uh, maybe you've had health issues, financial issues, family troubles, whatever it may be. Um, I wanted to get caught up into the last week, you know, as we were driving up yesterday, I tuned in to listen to Brother Kelly's messages and it was like hand in glove with what we're going to talk about here tonight. And to be honest, at first glance, I was like, he's preaching my message. But the thing is, is that the more I listen to it, the more I'm like in my head, you know, do I need to find something else? The thing is, is that I told you guys a few weeks ago that we were going to do this. And so the fact that Brother Kelly was there and I was on the other side of the country. Him and I didn't talk about who's preaching what. It just kind of made me feel like, wow, we must need this at this time that him and I are going to end up overlapping each other here. Um, so, so, so hopefully I can give you something useful here. Um, the thing is, and he's right, there is the chance, you know, you, you, you do things in the world. I've been guilty myself. I'm, I'm trying to learn to contain the flesh. Um, things are going good for you, you know, you've been seeing a bunch of blessings, um, maybe you're a, a worker bee, so part of you wants to stick your chest out and say, you see what I've been doing? And when you think that you've done it, you're not being thankful, you know, you're not very grateful for it. Or maybe uh, things have been going horribly wrong. Um, I know for me, the first, you know, I got saved uh, in the middle of 2019, and those first fruits of blessings, man, like 2019 was good, 2020 was good, 2021 was pretty good. In 2022, I feel like I'm dealing with some trials. I can't, you know, explain the spiritual side of things. 
um, but I know where I'm going to stand. Anyway, um, so the thing is, is, is that could be the case. Or it could just be that you've been picked on. Maybe you're being harassed. Maybe people are making fun of you. Um, maybe you're just trying to, to be out in the world and be a good witness, and you wind up being the butt of everybody's jokes. And I know I experienced a little bit of that, and that's okay, but that doesn't make it any less disheartening in the moment, right? Especially to what level those jokes might be. Um, somebody told me at work not too long ago, a new person, they're like, they warned me about you. It's like, what does that even mean? But anyway, these things can get you bogged down. You know, they got you distracted. And if anything, they, they'll turn you away, not necessarily like you'd be kicking rocks, like I'm not reading my Bible today. But maybe they just kind of got you down in the dumps and now you don't feel like doing anything, right? So I, I, I get that. So I do want to take a quick review from a few weeks ago. Um, verse 8, right? Uh, and Hilkiah, the high priest, said unto Shaphan the scribe, I found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. And Hilkiah gave the book to Shaphan and he read it. So Hilkiah finds the book, he hands it off to Shaphan, and in my head, what we have is Hilkiah representing, like, religion here, the world's religion, right? He's the high priest, but doesn't seem to have a whole lot of concern for the word. Um, he's got his practices, you know, the, 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 the motions. He goes through the motions, but he doesn't really have any heart for God, right? You know, whatever they're doing in service, it's not like, oh, man, I found the book and trying to learn. He's like, here, you take it, you know? So, um, and I know that I've already kicked that horse. That's what most of the, a few weeks ago was about. Um, but I, I had an afterthought that maybe you should see that I'm not just being a bully. Um, so let's jump over to Jeremiah real quick. Just Jeremiah 1. So Jeremiah 1.1 1, 1 says, The words of Jeremiah, the son of Hilkiah, of the priests that were in Anathoth in the land of Benjamin, to whom the word of the Lord came in the days of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah, in the thirteenth year of his reign. So right there we see that Jeremiah is Hilkiah's son. Right? Now go over to chapter 2, uh, verse 8, and we'll read 8 and 9. The priest, said, the priest said not, where is the Lord? And they that handled the law knew me not. The pastors also transgressed against me, and the prophets prophesied by Baal, and walked after the things that do not profit. Wherefore, I will yet plead with you, saith the Lord, and with your children's children will I plead. You can go back to 2 Kings. So here's the thing. So you have Jeremiah, who's Hilkiah's son. Hilkiah is the high priest. And I understand when it says your fathers, it's talking about more than just his direct father. But it is talking about his father, because if his father was in the right spot, right, if he was leading service correctly, there'd be no need to reach out to Jeremiah and say, hey, your fathers, multiple, aren't doing it right. So here we have, we're going to jump back in over here and just kind of change directions for a second. I just wanted to point out that I'm not just picking on Hilkiah. Um, actually, you know what? Flash forward real quick to Revelation 2, because we're going to go a slightly different direction for a second here. Revelation 2.4. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast less that left thy first love. And so now we'll go back and read 2 Kings 22, 11. And it came to pass when the king had heard the words of the book of the law that he rent his clothes. Um, and so what we have here, right, Josiah is just discovering the word, and he's, he's about to find his first love. Um, he hears the word, he rents his clothes, like, oh man, this is real. 
And so we'll come back over to 23 in verse 1. And the king sent, and they gathered unto him all the elders of Judah and of Jerusalem. And the king went up into the house of the Lord, and all the men of Judah, and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem with him, and the priests, and the prophets, and all the people, both small and great. And he read in their ears all the words of the book of the covenant, which was found in the house of the Lord. So he hears the word. He knows it's real. He rents his clothes like, oh, man, I got to get right. And then he calls all the people together. He calls the elders, all the people, small and great. And he reads them the words of the book. And then over in verse 3, And the king stood by a pillar and made a covenant before the Lord to walk after the Lord and to keep his commandments and his testimonies and his statutes with all their heart and all their soul to perform the words of this covenant that were written in this book. And all the people stood to the covenant. All the people stood to the covenant. Now that's pretty impressive, right? So the thing is, though, none of us lead a nation, right? But that kind of made me think for a second. When I first had a child, when you have a kid, you'll have somebody that'll say, it takes a village, right? It takes a village to raise a kid. Because it's not just you that's helping them learn. It's you, it's maybe your parents or other family members and eventually people at school and they'll learn from their friends and their friends' parents and, and it literally takes a village. You might have to go to work so you need to rely on these folks to, 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 to help watch the kids so you can you know perform life's tasks. But the, the, the reason I point that out is because, yeah, I'm not the President of the United States but I do still have a nation, right? I have my own little nation. And we all have our own little nation. Um, we all have some form of circle. Now, I understand that, um, uh, to try to explain this easy, so I am in charge of two locations, right? Two, two of the pizza shops. And so because I go to two stores, I see two stores worth of staff. And so my nation would be bigger than, say, a general manager at each store because they only have that store's worth of staff, right? And so maybe you're in a position that, well, maybe I don't even work. Well, you still have people. You still have friends, family. You still have neighbors. Um, they're, 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 there's always opportunities to witness, right? Now, um, <clears throat> sorry. So here we have, we have Josiah, who just discovered the word. He basically comes to everybody and is like, hey, we got to get right. We haven't been right. We need to get right. And the reason I mention witnessing is because I know when I got saved, I had a bad problem of cutting everybody's ears off. But I feel like the Lord shows you some things. You recognize some things around you. And there's people that you know, you love, you deal with that I encourage you to, to, to speak to. That song that we just sang, boy, it would be great if our loved ones were also singing that song. Um, the concept of leaving folks behind is pretty scary, you know. You talk about the rapture, we were just talking about it today. And uh, I've never read the book Left Behind. Um, I think I told you before that I'm not very studious, so I make an entire decision based off the title of that book. But what a scary thing, you know. If you have any concept of the rapture, and the rapture happens, and now you're left behind, like, we got to try to help those people, man especially if they're far enough down the road to have some inkling of an idea. But anyway, um, so let's go ahead and jump back into chapter 23 and pick up in verse 4. And the king commanded Hilkiah the high priest and the priests of the second order and the keepers of the door to bring forth out of the temple of the Lord all the vessels that were made for Baal and for the grove and for, the, for all the host of heaven. And he and he burned them without Jerusalem in the fields of Kidron and carried the ashes of them unto Bethel. And he put down the idolatrous priests whom the kings of Judah had ordained to burn incense in the high places in the cities of Judah and in the places round about Jerusalem. Them also that burned incense unto Baal to the sun and to the moon and to the planets and to all the hosts of heaven. And he brought out of the grove from the house of the Lord without Jerusalem unto the brook Kidron and burned it at the brook Kidron and stamped it small to powder 
and cast the powder thereof upon the graves of the children of the people. And he brake down the houses of the Sodomites that were by the house of the Lord, where the, woman, the, where the women wove hangings for the grove. And he brought all the priests out of the cities of Judah and defiled the high places where the priests had burned incense from Geba to Beersheba and break down the high places of the gates that were in the entering in of the gate of Joshua, the governor of the city that were on the man's left hand at the gate of the city. Nevertheless, the priests of the high places came not up to the altar of the Lord in Jerusalem, but they did eat of the unleavened bread among their brethren. And he defiled Topheth, which is in the valley of the children of Hinnom, Hinnom, that no man might make his son or daughter to pass through the fire to Molech. And he took away the horses that the kings of Judah had given to the son at the entering in of the house of the Lord by the chamber of Nathan Melech, the chamberlain, which was in the suburbs, and burned the chariots of the sun with fire. And the altars that were on the top of the upper chamber of Ahaz, which the kings of Judah had made, and the altars which Manasseh, Manasseh had made in the two courts of the house of the Lord, did the king beat down and break them down from thence, and cast the dust of them into the brook Gidron. And the high places that were before Jerusalem which were on the right hand of the Mount of Corruption, which Solomon the king of Israel had builded for Ashtaroth, the abomination of the Zidonians, and for Shemash, the abomination of the Moabites, and for Milcon, the abomination of the children of Ammon, did the king defile. And he break in pieces the images, and cut down the groves, and filled their places with the bones of, the, of men. Moreover, the altar that was at Bethel, and the high place which Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who had made Israel to sin, had made both that altar and the high place he break down, and burned the high place, and stamped it in the small powder, and burned the grove. And as Josiah turned himself, he spied the sepulchers that were there in the mount, and sent, and took the bones out of the sepulchers, and burned them upon the altar, and polluted it, according to the word of the Lord, which was the man of God proclaimed, who had proclaimed these words. Then he said, What title is this that I see? And the men of the city told him, It is the sepulcher of the man of God, which came from Judah, and proclaimed these things, that thou hast done against the altar at Bethel. And he said, Let him alone. Let no man move his bones, so that they let his bones alone with the bones of the prophet that came out of Samaria. And all the houses... And all the houses also of the high places that were in the cities of Samaria, which was the kings of Israel had made to provoke the Lord to anchor, Josiah took away and did to them according to all the acts that he had done in Bethel. And he slew all the priests of the high places that were upon the altars and burned men's bones upon them and returned to Jerusalem. Now that's like a mouthful, right? There's a whole lot there. Do you remember when you first got saved and you had your first fruits of victory, right? Uh, you started to recognize, like, what's wrong, what I, what I need to correct. Um, just as a small example, right? So I grew up, I was, I was born in 81, but, you know, like your teenage years. So I was a 90s kid, you know, like, in those days, like, a lot of us were little gangster kids, and... I listen to rap music. I grew up on rap music. But now I get that nostal nostalgic thought every now and again, and I might pop something in, and it's in there about as long for me to sing along a line or two and be like, no. Right? Like, all of a sudden you feel dirty about these things. And so Josiah here clearly has that type of thing that he's like, oh man, all this is wrong. Let's do something about it. And just to recap, verse 4, he removed the vessels and burned them. Verse 5, he put down the idolatrous priests. Verse 6, he brought out the grove and burned it. Verse 7, he broke down the side of my houses. Verse 8, he defiled and broke down the high places. Verse 10, he defiled Topheth, which is where they burn kids, right? Verse 12, beat down the altars to Ahaz. Verse 13, defiled Solomon's high places. Verse 14, broke the images and cut the groves. Verse 15, broke the altar and burnt the high place of Bethel. And verse 19, took away the, high, the houses of the high places in Samaria. So, like, clearly this guy is on fire for the Lord, right? He just learned the word, took it serious, called his people, spread like, hey. 
and he's gotten all this right, right? He just set the bar really high. Like, what was that, like 11 different things? I mean, I'm a work in progress, man. I can remember a few things getting right right off the bat, you know, but like this guy just got a lot right. And you could look at it that way, or you could look at it like, wow, there was a lot wrong right there, right? He did set the bar very high, obviously, but at the same time, like clearly there was a lot wrong. Maybe there's not that much wrong with you, you know? We're our own worst enemies. Nonetheless, though, this is where I want to be. This guy is like on fire for the Lord. I, I want to be there. I want to stay there. And pleasing the Lord should be our concern, right? We wake up in the morning. We shouldn't be letting ourselves get into selfish mindsets like you make time for the word, you get in your closet, you're like, all right, you know, I, need to, I, need to, I need to be where I need to be. But the culture that you're in, be it religious or just your fellow people at work, uh, and the Lord, they're, they're not on the same page here. So it's in the passage here, just take another look at verse 9, and it says, Nevertheless, the priests, the priests of the high places came not up to the altar of the Lord in Jerusalem, but they did eat of the unleavened bread among the brethren. So you got the priests that aren't willing to humble themselves to make altar call, as if that's too much, but yet they want to eat bread with the brethren, right? I mean, it's kind of funny, right? And so I point this out because I just want to say that when you go out in the world and you're trying to do right, and we all get beat up a little bit, we all get a little bit discouraged, but you're trying to pick yourself up, you're trying to do right, and you got your church people, right? Um, the church people with a liquor cabinet, right? And you're like, okay. These are not our people, right? Um, I'm not saying that, you know, you should, you should, you should, you should hateful, be hateful towards them, but you need to be aware of them. You need to, you need to recognize, like, maybe they're not who we are. And we wish they would be, but anyway, they're not, right? So verse 20, what does Hilk or, uh, sorry, Josiah do? And he slew all the priests of the high places that were upon the altars, and burns men's bones upon them, and returned them to Jerusalem. So obviously, he slew them, he killed them. And I'm not saying that we should do all that, but I'm just saying that uh, uh, these church types, um, spiritually speaking, I mean, they, th th this could be your family member. This could be a close family member. When it comes to things in the Lord, like, don't let yourself be polluted by what they have to say. Don't even talk about the Lord to them. Maybe you could find a witnessing moment. That would probably be good. I, like I said, you, you, you want them to be with us. But if all of a sudden, you know, it's going to turn to this or that, and Jesus drank wine too, run away, you know? Um, so here, so what is the point of all this, right? Um, the point here is to take a stand. The point of, you know, Brother Kelly was talking the other day. Here we are, and, uh, and, uh, and it just seems as though maybe this message is necessary. 22, maybe, maybe it wasn't hard on just me. Um, but what do you do? You make the decision to take a stand, um, to remember your first love. If you're new and you're learning, then make sure you're learning. If you've been around and through trials and frustrations, you're letting the gates open up a little bit, then make sure you shut those things. Like slam it back shut, because if you don't, it ain't going to change. If you keep about these things, you, you, you let something in because you used to. I used to listen to this type of music. You turn it on, it makes you feel dirty. If you let yourself get comfortable again in these things that you've already turned off from, that's where searing your conscience comes in. That's where, that's not that bad, you know? If you've fallen down, you know, that's okay. I do. But you got to get right. You got you to gotta get to your closet. You got to get right. And then you got to get back up. So now we have Josiah here. And I think Josiah is a great example. And I'm going to show you why right here. I know I'm not showing you anything you haven't seen before, um, but, but this is a man that was presented something that was very different than anything he had known before. He took it serious. 
He, he repented. He helped his people to get right, his nation. And then he actually, then he took care of what he could recognize was wrong, right? And so over in verse 24, it says, Moreover, the workers with familiar spirits and the wizards and the images and the idols and all the abominations that were spied in the land of Judah and in Jerusalem did Josiah put away, that he might perform the words of the law that were written in the book that Hilkiah the priest had found in the house of the Lord. I just want to point out real quick that Hilkiah didn't seem to whatever, but did you see how the Lord still used him? It's just, it's awesome, really. Uh, anyway, verse 25, And like unto him was there no king before him that had turned the Lord with all his heart and with all his soul and with all his might, according to all the law of Moses, neither after him arose any like him. What a compliment. Right? Like, think about all the men in the Bible. I mean, that's like, the Lord didn't even say that about David. He said that he was a man after God's own heart. But this is saying that nobody gave their heart like Josiah. What a compliment that is. And so the thing is, is I get it. Like, I'm with you guys. You know, I sit down there too. Um, this bar, that's tough stuff. Letting yourself get beat up because you don't live up to this bar? That's where your closet's for. That's where repentance for. That's where the altar is for. We can finish strong. As Kelly pointed out, in my father's house are many mansions, right? I would assume inheritance plays a role with the size, the spectacle of those mansions. So what do you do? Do you stay in your book? Your book helps you stay in the, in, in the right mindset, right? You get in your closet. You talk to the Lord. It's about your personal relationship, right? What kind of relationship do you have with your wife? You don't talk to her, right? If it's, if it's just this cold shoulder thing, you need to talk to the Lord. You listen for his voice. I mean, you go to him. You, you repent. You need help. Um, you should be not just, not just listening for guidance. I believe that, that the Lord speaks to me in that small, still voice. I, I, I believe that wholeheartedly. Um, but if, you're, if, you're, if this is just a one-sided relationship, if you don't want it to be a one-sided relationship, not only should you be looking for that, that small, still voice, but you should also be looking for um, uh, circumstances that answer your prayers. I've had moments that you could shrug off as a small thing or you could be like, wow, thank you, Lord. There was a time a couple years ago that I had this massive order I had to take care of and it was a lunch order and during the day we don't have high staffs because it's a pizza shop and, and at night is a majority of the business and it's a majority of the staff and I got this large order that the majority owner is attached to so I know he's going to hear all about it and that's fine, um, but I'm like getting to crunch time and I haven't even started this thing. And so what do I do? I find a, I find a corner, nobody's looking at me, they'd only laugh at me and they did, but it's not about them. And like, Lord, I need help. And I swear, like almost immediately, I get a text from somebody that used to work for me a couple years prior, hadn't talked to them at all, like, hey, if you ever need anything, just let me know. I'm like, yeah, I need help right now. We got that order out, you know? Praise the Lord. But if you're like personal like that and those things happen, like make sure you're praising the Lord for it. Anyway, it's, 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 it's really not that complicated. Um, you keep it simple. You stay in your book. You stay in your closet. You, you expect an answer. You expect, you expect what you need. And I'm not saying that the Lord doesn't sometimes say no. Don't ask for a million bucks. But... You keep it simple. Um, um, my, my, my yoke is easy and my burden is light, right? So I, I, I get it. Um, um, you mess up, you know. Um, you, you, you fall down, but you got to get up. You got to get right. Um, what's the goal of all this, right? Besides pleasing the Lord every day? Yeah, I, I assure you, I, 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 I assure myself that if I'm doing right, I'm sure I'm still going to face trials. But man, I'd rather go through those trials while I'm right with the Lord versus not. 
Um, where are you going to go? As pastor says, where are you going to go? Knowing what you know, where are you going to go? Um, we, should, we should be trying to stay in the right spot. So, so what's, what's the, the, the reason here? Matthew 25, I feel like, helps answer that question. This life is only for a moment, right? We're all hoping for the rapture, right? You get a crown for that? I hope the rapture happens before I make it home. I got an hour drive I don't want to make. I'll play it soon. Right now. Any second. Right now? Right now? Verse 23. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. That's the reason. That's the reason. We all get knocked down. I know sometimes pride can enter in and mess with us. Sometimes discourage enters in and mess with us. Regardless of the reason, the excuse, your explanation, the answer is to to get back in the book, to get back in your closet, to get that relationship going again. Because at the end of the day, we need the Lord every day. And on the other side of this, um, we especially need the Lord when we get there. That's it. Let's close in a word of prayer.